All right. Welcome to the Duke Spine Institute. It's now April 13th, 2023. And we're going to be streaming spine surgery done on an awake patient who's sleepy but not intubated. And we're going to be doing something called the Duke Laser Disc Repair shot, which is basically, hmm, we're a little too far north. It is a uh, surgery that's minimally invasive and endoscopic. Right now I'm just giving some numbing medicine to the tissues to make the patient more comfortable. And then we're gonna get started here. Shot. All right, so I need to aim down a little bit more. As you can see, the tables, the, you got to drop the table a little bit. You guys, I don't know why I have to do that. Shot, I think it's too much, but that's too much. These are small, small movements, not big movements. That's, that's better. Looks a little overexposed in the back. Doesn't look very crisp and clear. Any reason why, Jordan, that would be the case? Uh huh. Let's do that. Shot. All right. So I'm aiming for the. That's no. That's too much uh, of the blocking out. Shot. That's better. Yeah. Try to get that optimized before I come. With the anesthesiologist. Shot. Those are all things that you guys are capable of doing on your own without my involvement. Shot. All right, so it's looking pretty good in terms of the trajectory. The first disc I'm aiming for is L5S1, and I'm s just slipping around the facet joint. And I want to wait till he's a little more awake. Let's get an AP. And just do some num num on the skin. And then we're going to uh, make our incision shortly. And looks like he's responding a little bit. Shot, perfect, that looks good. So you can see the tip of the needle. Show us the tip of the needle, Jordan. Henry, take a look at the x-ray. The tip of the needle is just lateral to the facet joint. You can see the facet joint, yep, <laughs> on his left side. The reason we chose the left side is the herniations are worse on the left side. Now we're going to try to fix all three discs with this same approach. Still sleepy? All right, so I'm going to make my incision and I'm going to um, go after the next two discs while he's still a little sleepy and get position right to where I need to be. You can see the surgery requires an incision. Shot. The incision is only seven millimeters, it's tiny. This is the smallest surgical incision of any type of spine surgery. We have almost no bleeding, very small amount shot. When I say shot, what I'm telling my team is get an x-ray picture shot. We use the x-rays to guide us shot. All right, looks good. I feel really comfortable with that one. That looks good. We got one more to go. And this is going to be the L34. That's almost perfect. Let's, you need to move a little north. You're off on your wag. Mm -hmm. I would just wag it, leave the base where it is. I don't know. That's better. That's better. Shot. 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 
Well, Dr. Berndez, the time is nine. AP? I'm sorry I'm moving so quickly for you. Scott? Yeah, it looks good. Stay there. Is he reliable? All right, back down, back down to a lateral five one. So we are in position at three four, four five looks pretty good. And the only one I'm waiting on is L five S one, the hardest one to do. Uh, we want our patient to be a little bit more awake. So I'm going to wait another minute. All right, any questions from the audience while we're waiting? They still? No current questions. All right, let's go ahead and run the video on, educational video on why is it that people actually get pain in their back from a herniated disc? Pressure on the disc causes herniation of the nucleus pulpus through the annular tear. Inflammatory tissues develop within the annular tear causing back pain. The inflamed annular tear generates pain signals. Additional injuries can cause symptoms to worsen. Inflammation from the annular tear can spread to nearby nerve roots, causing leg pain. Signals travel up nerves to the brain, causing localized back pain. Pain signals reach the primary somatosensory cortex, causing conscious awareness of pain. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, Submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. Okay, folks, while well, you guys were watching the video, learning about what causes back pain, which is a herniated disc 85% of the time, this is the treatment for it. This is called the Duke Laser Disc Repair. We've got three discs that we're aiming for. When I saw this patient in my office, he had told me he had back pain. Lay still. And he's just kind of waking up from the anesthesia, so he's a little, a little groggy at this point. Kind of like if somebody were to start waking you up from a deep sleep and shaking you, saying, hey, wake up. When you first wake up, you're going to be a little disoriented. That's what he is, a little disoriented. So while he's waking up and wiggling around a little, we'll talk. But when I saw him in clinic, he came in like everybody else. I have back pain. And I said, where is it? And he told me, you know, it's in this area right here. I said, put your finger on the exact spot. And he pointed right there. And I said, anywhere else? And he said, yeah, right there. Anywhere else? He said, yeah, right there. I said, okay. Looked at his MRI, and sure enough, he had three herniated discs right there. And I said, well, that's the problem, is the herniated disc. So now that he's here in the operating room, here to get fixed, we're going to verify that information. All right, lay still. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. How is he? Is he reliable? You open your eyes? You open your eyes? Don't move. Try to stay still. Yes, no, maybe so. Can you hear me? Can you hear Dr. Duke? Don't move. Lay still. You're doing great. Everything's fine. All righty. Let's see what we got there, Jordy. Shot, is that it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where do you feel that? Where are you feeling that? Where are you feeling that? Tell us where. You feeling that in your back or your leg? Huh? Where? Where are you feeling that? Can you speak a little bit louder for me? 
there any way you can give them a little bit of the fentanyl? Just not enough to take all the pain away, but just enough to kind of blunt it. Because I can't numb him up down here. You doing all right? Just got to find a way to, we've had a lot of wiggling lately, and I'm wondering what are you doing different, maybe? You think there's anything? You okay? Lay still. Can I ask you a question? Huh? Can you open your eyes? All right. Good. Open your eyes. So okay? this, the two parts of the surgery that need patients to be awake, number one, when I'm passing through the foramen near the nerve root, I want them awake so they can tell me if I'm too close. And number two, um, I don't know what happened, guys, but we're showing a lot of white behind, like air, which we shouldn't be. Jordan, you got to... You know, I shouldn't have to tell you this. You should already automatically know we're switching from AP to lateral and you need to adjust your collimator, okay? All right. Shot? Okie dokie. All right. We need to ask you some questions. We don't need you to move, though. We just need you to lay still. Lay still. Just stay still. Okay. So, the two things that we need patients to help us with, number one is make sure we're not too close to the nerves. Number two, I want to make sure these discs are really the cause of his pain, which I'm 99.99% sure. But it's always nice to know, is that your typical pain that he gets, and how bad is it on a scale of 1 to 10? So we're going to ask him that question in a moment. Lay still. Okay, lay still, my friend. Stop moving. Don't move. You okay? You know, things are bothering you? Okay. No problem. No problem. There you go. Try to lay still for me, okay? That's perfect. Keep your head nice and comfortable. We're going to ask you some questions. Ready? All righty then. You comfortable? How are you doing? All right. Any pain? Are you having any pain anywhere? Beside your nose? I know. Are you having any pain? Good. How bad is that on a scale of 1 to 10? That's what's the highest it went? All right. Uh, 7 over 10. Lay still. You're okay. The highest it is is a 7? All right, show us the tear. Take a look at this x-ray, folks. You can see the tear in the back of the disc. See the white arrow showing you the tear? All right, settle down. Now, it was only a 7 out of 10 at L5-S1 because the dye all leaked out through the tear. I couldn't get any pressurization. Normally, you need a little pressurization, but I couldn't get any. <coughs> Is that better? He said, yeah. Mm. How bad is that on a scale of 1 to 10? Seven. Seven. Sounds like it's higher than a 7. What's the highest it goes? <laughs> He's funny. He said 7, but he kept going like, Grrr. I'm like, really? 7? I don't know, but all I know is I want the wiggling to stop. I'm just trying to give you ideas. So that was a 9 over 10. Concordant? Yes. I'm sorry about that, my friend, but we're just confirming the right disc. So, so far, we know the L5-S1 is definitely causing his daily back pain that he gets every day. The L4-5 is the same. There's just a discrepancy. One is more at a 9 over 10, the other one at 7. But the only reason for that is the 7 at 5-1 is because all the dye leaked out. See, I still have dye in here because it pressurized. You need the disc to pressurize to get an accurate reading. Don't move your body. Lay still, okay? You're moving around too much. Are you, are you more comfortable now? Are you comfortable? Are you comfortable now? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any pain? Yeah. Where's your pain? All right. How bad is that on a scale of 1 to 10? 
Okay, Ooh. fascinating. All right, sorry about that. We're all done. We're going to put you to sleep now. Is that where you get pain usually? All right. Is that, is that where you typically get pain? That was a good one. <laughs> all right, just go count from 1 to 100 for me. When you wake up, that pain will be gone forever. So this is absolutely incredible, wonderful news for him. We found the causes of his back pain. It's three discs in his back. That's just medicine going in your arm. Don't worry about it. That's going to put you to sleep. Count out loud for me, one to 100. Count out loud. Keep going. So basically, I tested these three discs with a discogram called an evocative E-V-O-C-A-T-I-V-E -E discogram, which we do on every one of these lumbar and thoracic cases. And indeed, it produced pain at all three discs. The worst one was the top one. Surprising, because if you look at the MRI, the top one is like the newest. Just keep counting. You're doing great, my friend. Keep counting. Shot. So at this point, we're going to place our guide wire, remove one of our needles at 5-1. We're going to place the dilator. The dilator is not going to harm the patient. It's going to spread his muscles and fascia, making him, uh, giving us a pathway. You're doing great. Num num. All right, Henry, you want to run the video, showing the audience. Um, how the Duke laser disc repair procedure actually works. Keep counting out loud, my friend. Disc herniations are a common cause of chronic back pain. The inflamed annular tear causes back pain. Inflammation of the nerve roots causes leg pain. A Band-Aid sized skin incision is made. A small tube is inserted without damaging the bone or soft tissues. The laser removes the herniation and debrides the annular tear. The annular tear heals on its own. If you have a herniated or bulging disc and back pain, submit your MRI for a free review at www.mri.dukespine.com. Welcome back. We're in the process of getting this L5S1 disc accessed. I know it looks horrible, me hammering away, but that's how you do it, folks. So it's funny, on Tuesday we showed some of these surgeries and one of the, one of the viewers commented, oh my gosh, you know, the patient is moaning and groaning. Yes, that's right. We're not hiding the truth from you. And all surgeries are painful. Um, the reason why you don't see that is, first of all, doctors won't show you. But second of all, because um, there are points in surgery where the patient will feel some more discomfort depending on their anesthesia level. So it's important you understand that. Don't freak out. It's all part of normal surgery. The first time I did it, I freaked out. Careful now, you gotta come straight out. The first time I did it, I freaked out. I mean, when you know, watching a patient squirm around a bit it's a bit uncomfortable for the doctor too because you don't know if everything's okay. I assure you, everything is fine. After doing 1,600 of these surgeries, and that's just the endoscopic surgeries, I can assure you this is totally normal, par for the course, okay? But this is why surgery is done under anesthesia, because it hurts the patient normally. That's why you have to put them out, keep them from moving. 
try to reduce the amount of discomfort they're feeling, reduce the effect of pain on the cardiovascular system. All right, so far you guys have seen why did this cause pain? I need my scope on. Uh-huh, thank you. And also, um, what we do to fix it. Henry, I almost thought we were getting up for another good inflammatory picture, but I think most of that's just blood. All right, I'm gonna grab some herniated fragments out. And we'll take our first question from the audience. First question comes from Oz on YouTube. Hello, Oz. Welcome back. They asked, why do some doc doctors do discograms before surgery and you do it during surgery? Great question, Oz. The reason is because the discogram is a really nice test to figure out whether or not a disc is causing pain. And the truth is, is that I'm pretty darn good at figuring that out without doing the discogram. So when I get in here during surgery and I do a discogram, it's not because I'm not sure if the disc is causing pain or needs surgery, it's because I just like to confirm it. Since we're here and we had to put a needle in there anyway to get the guide wire in, you're already set up for it. Plus, we use um, not just uh, discogram dye in the dye, we actually use wipe. We actually use um, some numbing medicine. So no matter what, I'm doing a discogram every single surgery. Okay, whether or not I'm doing an evocative discogram to see whether or not that disc is painful for the patient, which is called an evocative discogram, that doesn't matter. What matters is I'm always going to do a discogram because I'm always going to put contrast dye to see the tear. I'm always going to put the blue dye to see the tear visually. So I'm going to put the contrast dye to see the tear radiographically. I'm going to put the blue dye to see the tear visually, like you guys can see the blue dye, right? And then finally, I'm gonna put some numbing medicine in there to make this less painful for the patient. So no matter what, we're doing a discogram. Might as well record the patient's response while we do it. So we have that data. So there you go. In other words, we don't do the discogram because we're not sure of the pain source. We're doing the discogram for a therapeutic effect. We're actually using what we inject to make a diagnosis and to provide treatment, which is the surgery you're watching. But since we're doing it, we might as well just record the patient's response. We have another question. Uh-huh. This comes from Meowasaurus on YouTube. Hi there. Thanks. Welcome to our broadcast. I think you've been here before. I believe so they have. And they asked, uh, do you have any open fusion scheduled or, uh, or are patients mostly opting for the DLDR? Yeah, great question. So we do have a fusion coming up. That's what the audience member is asking. And Henry, do you know the date on that fusion? Uh, not to memory, no. Yep, so uh, Richard would know. Huh? I need to know. Oh, you don't know Luis? <laughs> Luis is like, I need to know too. Know. You're right, we need to know. Everything okay, doctor? Yep, more or less. Yeah, so the fusion is coming up. It's actually gonna be a really good fusion because it's lumbar for the lower back. It's, it's, I think, three or four levels, which mean three or four discs. So it's gonna be a big one. Oh, I see Luis right now. He's, he's uh, stretching his back like, oh boy, here we go. Yeah, four level lumbar fusion. It's a patient who, believe it or not, wants fusion, <laughs> right? Every one of our patients wants the laser surgery except this one, go figure. Um, that said, he's got his reasons, I'm sure, and I'm not here to question them. Huh? I don't know how old he is. I can't remember, to be quite honest. I just know that it's been approved by his insurance, and he wants to get it done soon as possible, and I'm pretty sure Richard's putting it on the schedule soon. I think, huh? I don't know, it's, it's local, it's like this area. I think it's a work comp patient, actually, somebody who was injured at work. So yes, we have a lumbar fusion coming up, but whoever asked, by the way, you're welcome to go to our YouTube channel. We have hundreds and hundreds of recorded live lumbar fusions. You're welcome to watch them. Look at the tear right there. So Henry, there's some inflammatory tissue here. Um, you could see it, it's that pinkish color. I don't know if it's good enough to put in our paper. What do you think, Henry? Probably not, right? 
I, I, took I took photos, but in my opinion, out of everything, I... You I think the th ones we have are better? In my opinion, yeah, yeah. this one doesn't right. suffice. There's a piece of herniation right there, by the way. Just so you know, I'm going to try to grab it out. Um, so to answer your question, we do have a fusion coming up. Richard knows the date, um, but it's going to be in the next month probably. And just keep your eyes on the calendar. Henry, you're still updating our live broadcast calendar, right? Of course, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sorry I don't have that information for you. But we do have a four level. It's going to be a big one. It'll probably take almost the whole day. I expect it to take us until at least two or three in the afternoon. And we'll probably just do that surgery that day, maybe one more at most. So it's a big one. Our fusions are done outpatient, by the way, for those of you wondering. Our patients literally go home a uh, couple hours after their surgery. So he would be a first case early in the morning. And I would expect him to take two hours to, to three hours to recover and then go home. We actually looked at our outpatient fusions uh, a few years ago and published our results at a uh, Southern Neurosurgical Society meeting. And we have been doing multi-level lumbar. We're not, we don't just do a fusion, by the way, folks. We do the most advanced fusion in the world. It is, um, it's done with osteotomies and decompression of the nerve roots, and then inner body cage, inner body fusion, pedicle screws, rods, cross links, so it's a, a um, deformity correcting surgery, a decompressive surgery, and a stabilizing surgery along with the fusion aspect and instrumentation. All right, looking good. You guys can see the granulation tissue right there. You guys see the pink color and the pink color over there. That is where the back pain comes from, granulation tissue. There it is right there. Man, that's a pretty good one right there, Henry. I've got to say, let me shut off the irrigation, get ready to take a few pictures. Copy that. Bam, do it. Dude, I like that one. Maybe we use this as well for the, for the paper. Can you get that right there? I got right. it. I got it. And then the irrigation back on, and we're going to blast it. This, folks, right there, and just so you understand, that fiber you're looking at, glass fiber, is... 0.55 millimeters. That is half a millimeter. So it gives you an idea of how small those granulation pockets are that are causing all the pain. Unfortunately, 99% of doctors don't know this. 99.9999999% of doctors don't know this. Literally, there's probably three of us in the world that understand these granulation pockets in the disc as pain the cause of pain. So the problem is people are going out there and getting treatments that don't work because their doctors don't understand what causes back pain and neck pain. Any other questions? Yes, our next question comes from Saeed on YouTube. Saeed, yes. And they ask, is there anyone you can recommend in the Chicago area? No. There's nobody in the Chicago area I can recommend, Said. I'm sorry. Chicago is a wonderful city, one of my favorite cities to visit. It has wonderful restaurants, culture, people, but it does not have the best spine surgeons in the world. I'm sorry. I even know the head of spine surgery over there in Northwestern. Um, nobody that I would recommend. So you want the best spine surgery, you're going to have to travel. It's just like if we want uh, to see the, uh, the Hancock, huh? If you want to see the space shuttle, you got to travel as well. If you want to see the space shuttle on the la launch pad, you got to come to Florida. If you want to see Mickey Mouse, you come to Florida. If you want the best spine surgery, you come to Florida, to the Duke Spine Institute. That's just the facts. And I can't recommend anybody in Chicago because I don't trust those doctors at all. You understand? If I trusted them to do a great job, I would send you to them. I don't trust anybody there. And you shouldn't either. 
sorry. I could lie to you and give you a name. If you want, I'll lie to you. Just give me the word. We do have another question. Yes, let me know if they need a lie from me. <laughs> As of now, not, not of yet. Uh, <laughs> but next question comes from Oz on YouTube. And they ask, why do fusions make you taller? <laughs> why do fusions make you taller? Great question. All right, so everyone knows that their height is dependent on a few bones in your body. One of them is your legs. Another is your, your torso, right? And guess where your spine is? Your spine is located in your torso. So if you can make the neck longer or the torso longer, you can make yourself taller. And that's what spine surgeons do when we put cages in the spine. We're going to make you slightly taller. I would never tell a patient that they're going to get taller with a fusion in a cage, okay? Because I think that's the wrong thing to do. You don't want to be doing surgery to make people taller. That's nonsense, okay? But the reality is, is if you put enough cages in the discs, He's moving. If you put enough cages in the disc, then you're going to make the person taller by lengthening their spine. Now, the amount of lengthening of the spine they're getting is negligible. There is one more effect, and that is straightening of the spine. So have you ever seen anybody hunched over, walking hunched over because their back hurts? So if you get rid of their back pain and put a spacer in there, you can actually have them stand straighter, and then they're going to be taller just because they're standing straighter. But they're not really taller. They're just standing straighter. So the effect of tallness with spine fusions, with cages, is not really something that you should ever aspire for. That's not why we do the surgery. At least it shouldn't be. Though I wouldn't be surprised if some surgeons market it that way. So it's the placement of the cages where the discs are, the collapsed discs are, that give you additional height quote-unquote height. Any biters on the lies? So the, good, the only good spine surgeon I know in Chicago, and I still wouldn't go, is Dr. Richard Fessler. That's F-E-S-S-L-E-R. Richard Fessler. I think he's a chairman still. Um, and he trained me at Gainesville, University of Florida. He's a good guy, but he's not doing the most advanced spine surgery in the world. He's not doing what we do, okay? He also gets a lot of money from the implant companies over the years. He's, he's one of their advisors, and he makes millions and millions of dollars recommending uh, fusion surgeries to patients, okay, or implant surgeries. So he's highly incentivized to recommend putting in metal. How's he doing, guys? All right, grab her. Huh? Why wouldn't she just use it on everybody's? Scope is off, guys. Scope should be off. Oh, whoops. My bad. Keep it on. Keep it on. We're back. We're back. We're back. On. 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 What are you saying? So you guys got one machine? You wanted to test it out, make sure you like it? And then if you like it, you'll get another one? I think that's a good plan. But once you decide, let me know, we'll get another one. Okay, almost done with this disc. This is the hardest disc to fix, L5S1. You guys doing all right? It's a piece of herniation, by the way. What does next week's schedule look like?
Will somebody contact Richard and ask him when the fusion is? Because Luis is now no, I mean, making me nervous. This is a herniation bio. Look at the size of this thing. Oh, my You're doing great. oh ho, ho. there it is. Put the light on. Camera on. Here we go. Wow. <laughs> you guys see this? No wonder why he's wiggling around. Hey, Henry, you see this yes, thing? Yes, we do. <laughs> That's like literally fishing a whale out right there. That is huge, guys. Look at the size of this herniation. It is quite literally two inches long. Hey, help me out here. Hold the tail. Wait, 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 wait. Let me lay it down. This is like when you go fishing and you catch that really big tuna. There it is. Four centimeters. Four centimeters. No, more than four. Almost five centimeters. Is that a record for us? Two inches? Everybody see this. Henry, you getting a good picture? Yes, we are. Hey, I want to put this picture in the, uh, in the journal. Copy that. Okay, so I need you to get a good one. Copy Take that. Take a couple. Oh, don't get Luis's finger there. I just want to hold it. There we go. Is that good? Try to get some Perfect. of the endoscope as well. I'll just put the endoscope here. Maybe something like that. Is that a good one? Yep. Looks good. All right. This is like when you... Here you go. Feel that, baby. That People wonder, what is a disc like? Well, that's what a disc is like. It's hard to explain. There's really nothing quite like it, a herniated disc. But see how I was, I was fishing it and fishing it, and we finally got it. All right. Anyway, this patient is going to be so happy that we got that out. Take that. By the way, that was the bottom disc, L5S1. I need to grab her. And remember, that, that disc was the least painful for back pain, but it also had the biggest herniation for leg pain. Here comes another piece. Not quite as big, just a little piece there. Now, that was a giant herniation, folks. I'm sorry? Take your time. You do what you need to do. Keep the patient safe. Yep. You need me to do anything, Dr. Berndes? All right, I can hold. You tell me when. I'm not going to put the laser in until you're ready. That should have reduced his pain level quite a bit. So this is a great time to ask questions since we're not using the laser right now. We're kind of in a little bit of a holding pattern while we get some anesthesia stuff taken care of. I'm just pulling out little free fragments that are kind of hanging out. But I'm pretty much ready to move on to the next disc shortly. Yeah, I still want to hit that last corner with the laser. All right, any questions? Yes, we have a question from Saeed once more on YouTube. Sure. They ask, I just had three s steroids. Oh, wait. Uh, and Henry, by the way, I want you to send me that a, couple, a bunch of those disc pictures. Okay. Copy that. And they ask, do these surgeries use any medicines that cause anxiety like steroids inject injections do? Yes. Yeah, researchers, researchers use steroid injections and doctors use steroid injections and steroids definitely cause anxiety for sure let me know when i can progress shut the scope off for now we're just going to take a, a moment any other questions No current questions. Is he moving? Yeah. 
15 pieces? Yeah. I believe it. That thing was a beast. Do you see how big that herniation was? It was beautiful. Yeah, we'll show you, we'll show all the herniated pieces at the end. That's a good idea. Let me know when I can proceed. Any more questions, Henry? Yes, we have a question from Bethany on Facebook. Yes, Bethany. And they ask, how can the DLDR help with completely collapsed L5 to S1 with lateral slash foramenal stenosis? Great question. So first of all, the very best treatment in the world for lateral foramenal stenosis, which is narrowing of the lateral foramen, is this surgery because we're entering and leaving through the foramen. So it's the most direct access to the foramenal stenosis than any surgery in the world. More importantly, we're not damaging the spine to get there. Every other spine surgery you've been talking about or read about will damage the spine while getting to the foramen. Second of all, completely collapsed disc space doesn't need treatment. The, de the collapsed disc space is not the cause of your symptoms. What causes symptoms is the annular tear at the back of the disc. And it doesn't matter if it's completely collapsed or partially collapsed or half collapsed or 1% collapsed. If you have an annular tear as the source of your back pain, which is 85% of chronic back pain, then you need this procedure done and anything else will be inaccessive, uh, sorry, excessive and unnecessary and dangerous. This is the safest, most effective treatment in the world for back pain from a disc problem. And then of course, treating stenosis, it's the most effective direct treatment of stenosis in the foramen of any other treatment in the world. That's how it works. We basically open the hole where the nerve comes out, the foramen, by removing the herniation. How we doing, Doc? Sorry. Excellent. All right, keep the questions coming. Great questions. We're going back in. We're going to just do a little more lasering um, and open up the foramen a little bit more. You guys can see the scar tissue right there. You can see the fat in the epidural space, the foramenal ligament right there. Just about done at this level. I need one minute on this level and we'll be done, doctor. Ah, got a piece of herniation in the way. All right, I think we're good. Luis, any thoughts? You happy? Let's show our audience the nerve root in the foramen. Okay, laser off, grab her. I'm gonna show you guys the L5 nerve root. Ah, all right, the L5 nerve root is right there, you see it? Okay, so hey Henry, another great picture. Ready, ready, take a picture right there. You got it? Come on Henry, I need to hear you. This is very important for our paper. Sorry, I was rushing to the front to get picture, the shots. Picture. I already got it, I already got it. All right, and get another one right there. You got it? Yes, yes, got it. All right, and then one more right there. Get that, and then I'm gonna shut the irrigation off, see if it makes it better. Tell me when you got it. Got it. Shutting off the irrigation, oh, no, that makes it worse. All right, so one more and then we'll call it, let's see if I slow it down. Look at the fat droplet coming out right there, boom. All right, now, that's a good one, try that. Yes? Got it. Perfect. That last one is the perfect one. I think that's gonna be the best one. We're done here at 5-1. Thank you, Henry, that's awesome. You're contributing to the education of neurosurgeons, spine surgeons worldwide. We're gonna publish those pictures and help doctors understand how to do this surgery better. By the way, very few surgeons in the world can do a 5-1 transforaminal endoscopic surgery. As a matter of fact, I may be the only one besides Dr. Anthony Young who's retired 
but he was one of my teachers, prolific publisher. How are we doing, guys? Good? Bernadette? Keep him lighter. Keep him lighter. Okay? Just keep him lighter. Huh? Yeah, I know. But you know, the problem is some of these patients take things, they don't tell us. Okay. Did you hear what I said? Some patients take things they don't tell us about, right? That could affect their physiology. Just keep him lighter and let him breathe. He's going to have to go through the transition. I understand. But I'd rather have him all over the place and ventilating. We'll just have to yell at him. <laughs> all right, any questions from the audience? No current questions. We do have a comment from Saeed on YouTube. Let's go saying amazing you are so inspiring please keep us uh, please keep up the good work and inspire other surgeons thank you shot we're gonna have to move a little quickly to try to get our patient cared for so i'm going to cut down a little on the talking and just focus more on keeping him comfortable while we finish his surgery shot all hands on deck Shot. Pull back the guide wire a little bit. Shot. Pull back, pull out the guide wire. Go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys ever see the movie Armageddon? Great movie. Our wedding song is based on that movie. Let me go a little more dilator. Shot. All right, that's great. Let's get that out. All right, fluoro out. You're still welcome to ask me questions, folks. But if I can't answer them, I can't answer them. I'll do my best. All right, grab her. But Henry, those pictures that we just took are very important for me. All right, so please make sure I get them too by email. Even if you have to send me a bunch of emails, I don't care. Copy I'm, that. I'm going to want to label them in some type of a program like PowerPoint or some program you have, maybe video, uh, picture editing, so I can add some numbers to it, so I can do some teaching with it. Laser. If that makes sense. What program, no, do, you, what program do you use? Uh, uh, it's mainly screenshots. And well, you use Black Arrow. Where do you get the Black Arrows? Oh, Black Air, uh, I got them from a website, a third party. Uh, I'll probably use PowerPoint. So just send them to me. I'll download them on my computer, use PowerPoint to edit them and put their numbers, illustrations on. Copy that. I'll take care of the editing on these. See the annular tear right there? That blue tear, we just passed it, but I'll come back to it in a moment. How's he doing? Are you happy with his level of sedation? I am. Can you make him lighter? You want to make him lighter? If lighter is better for you, then do it. It's 
It's a good thing we got the big taco today, or I should say the big burrito. So this will be called the big burrito since we're naming everything, Luis. Oh, I mean, uh, and the other one will be the tiny taco. Tiny, tiny, tiny. All right. So this fiber is a one millimeter fiber. If you guys watch the cervical that we did this morning, that was a half a millimeter fiber. So we call this fiber officially is now called the big burrito. And the other one will be the tiny taco. Sorry, I'm just thinking about Mexican food. I have two foods that I love the most, Mexican and Indian. Thanks. You guys see the blue tear right there? That is the annular tear. It's the whole reason we're here to get rid of that, to breed it. All right, if there's questions, I will take them. No current questions. Let me know when you need my help. You doing all right, Berndez? Let me know if you have more questions, Henry. Copy that. Did you remember the percutaneous laser shots we did the other day? Do you still have them or you want to shoot some more? I still have them. I could definitely uh, look back at them, but There's I, a tear I know for a right fact there. I still have them. All right, well, if you, if you don't, if you have them, send me them. Send me some shots. And um, it should only be one picture. Good one with the laser down the, the needle, remember? Yes. And yes. if you have a good one, send that to me. I want to use that as well. And if you have some video of it, which I don't remember if you got any video or not, but I'd like the video as well. Yeah, no, no, I could Just definitely do that. Just a few seconds. Maybe five seconds of video. Copy that. Thank you. All right, we're just about done here. I need three more minutes at, at four, this disc, and then we got one more disc to go. Dr. Berndez is breathing a sigh of relief. So the patients that are difficult for me to do may not be difficult for the anesthesiologist and vice versa. The ones that are easier for me could be hard for him. Um, there's two things you gotta think about with every single surgery. The surgical problems that you have to deal with and then the anesthesia problems you have to deal with. And there can be patients that have difficult surgical and anesthesia problems or just difficult anesthesia problems. Every time I have to go under anesthesia, I always worry, am I gonna wake up? You know, it's a real concern. You gotta make sure you have a good anesthesiologist. There's always a risk that you won't wake up and you have to be prepared to take that risk. Now, fortunately, that's not been a problem at Duke's Spine. But it happens everywhere even with the best anesthesiologists you can only plan so much sometimes no matter how much you plan you still get caught out a little bit of fat there the nerve is going to be up there the nerve root just outside that tube just about done 30 seconds here should be done A lot of fat at 12 o'clock, that's just epidural fat. Do you get that um, mask on, Berndez? You get that thing on? By the way, take a look at the fibers there. I, I'll go back and show you.
We have a question. Yeah, give me a second. You guys see the fibers right there that are running left and right? Those are really up and down. That's the posterior longitudinal ligament right behind the disc. What's happening with my fiber, my laser? Did you turn it off? Really? Strange, why? Luis? I don't know, maybe it's a, I don't know if you click twice like a pump up. Oh yeah, I did. So that probably put it you yourself. Oh, so I, I pushed the pedal twice. Yeah, so I believe that's Got it. All right, there's the other nerve root. Man, that, today is a beautiful day for nerve roots. Look at that. Normally we don't get to see that. Might as well take a quick picture there. And give me one more second, I'll use the grabber and get a better picture because we had a fumarole. Right now, Henry. And let me turn down the irrigation. Ah. I got it. All right, cool. Thank you. All done. I think we're done. Yeah, that looks good. See the little veins there? Ah, let me zap that one little area right there. Sorry. Laser, laser. All right, pretty much done. Question. Yes, question comes from Oz once more on YouTube. Yes, Oz. They asked, do you think that deadlifting and squats can cause herniated discs? Yeah, for sure. Deadlifting and squats can cause herniated discs for sure. Yep. I tell people never deadlift, never do a clean and jerk, and squats. I mean, if you're going to squat, just do lightweight, you know? There's no reason to be going crazy. But, yeah, those things will definitely blow your discs out. Very dangerous. All right, great question. Any kind of deadlifting, clean and jerk, it's all bad. One more to go. Bring that fluoro in. Excuse us, watch your shoulder. Is this Clyde? So today we have Clyde. Clyde is our new X-ray fluoro machine. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. We finally got the delivery of Bonnie and Clyde, aptly named by my radiology team. So Bonnie and Clyde are the two new $160,000 fluoro machines. Top of the line from Siemens. And I like Bonnie and Clyde. I agreed to the names because truthfully, Anytime you're paying $160,000 for a machine that should cost $10,000, you're getting robbed. Right, Jordan? So we got robbed, but you know what? That's the going rate. I can't do anything about it. And the truth is, I want my patients to have the very best machines, technology available to them for their surgery. So we invested in the number one most expensive as well, but highest quality fluoro machine in the world. It's the Siemens Flow. And the only thing flowing is the money out of my bank account to pay for it, right? Hence Bonnie and Clyde. I hope you guys can find some humor in that. The sad thing is that years after you use these machines, you go back to the company to get some money for it, and they want to give you um, 10 cents on the dollar. Not even 10, 5 cents on the dollar. They'll give you 5% of what you pay 10 years later. So quite literally 5%. <laughs> he started talking. I looked at him. <laughs> I'm sorry, Louise. Oh, right I know, I'm terrible. We're done. You, you distracted me and I hit Louise's hand with a hammer. 
<laughs> you know, they tell Lewis Hamilton it's hammer time. But nobody told me it was hammer time. Right, Luis? You don't want it to be hammer time. <laughs> yeah, it's on. All right, so this will be our last disc. This is the most painful of the three based on his discogram. You can see how fresh the herniation is. It's a fluffy blue and white. That just means that it's recent. We'll be done in 10 minutes, doctor. Now let's get in there and get it done. One of the things that's nice about this particular patient is that we have really nice pictures of the anatomy, the normal anatomy. He doesn't have a lot of fat around his nerve roots in the foramen. So you're able to actually see the dorsal root ganglion. It's that white thing bulging out and it lives in the neural foramen. And it's the bodies, the cell bodies of all the axons, all the neurons, sorry, uh, that make up the sensory nerve going down the leg. So all the skin in your leg that you can feel people touching your leg. Um, yeah. Those, those touches to your leg and your skin are perceived in your brain because of little cables that are living organism cables, living cells. And we call those cells neurons. And the part of the neuron that is um, the most important part is the cell body, the soma, we call it S-O-M-A. And it's really a part of the cell where the endoplasmic reticulum, the nucleus, the Golgi apparatus, ribosomes are there. It's the protein manufacturing center. It's basically the industrial area of your cell, okay? If you think of your cell as being like a city, it's the industrial neighborhood where everything is manufactured, okay? So that's what, that's what the soma is. It produces all the proteins and enzymes your, your cells need to, to do their job. Anyway, it's a fat part of the neuron, um, a wide part of the neuron, and that's all those cell bodies are located in one spot called the dorsal root ganglion. There is no ventral root ganglion, just the dorsal root ganglion. All right, any questions? Five minutes? No current question. Doctor? Okay, we're gonna be done in five minutes. This is the annular tear I'm debriding the whole time I've been debriding it. That's where you find the herniated fragments of nucleus. People ask me, Doc, if you take all that out, then aren't you gonna not have any disc left? No, we're not taking the disc out at all. We're just taking the herniation out. It just looks big because the magnification of the system is very high. We're magnifying everything a lot. I don't know how much we're magnifying it, but probably calculated it. I'm not sure how to calculate it, but I could tell you that fiber you're looking at is one millimeter. So the inside of this tube is around five, um, five and a half millimeters, about five millimeters from side to side. So it looks like a big space, but it's not a big space. It looks like a lot of disc, but it's not a lot of disc, really. This procedure you're watching is called the Duke Laser Disc Repair. It was created at Duke Spine Institute, designed, developed, pioneered by myself. Dr. Ara Duke Majin at the Duke Spine Institute. It's a type of endoscopic spine surgery. There are many types of endoscopic spine surgery. This just happens to be the best. It's not that I can't do the other types of endoscopic spine surgery, I can. 
I choose not to because they're not as good as this. The other types of endoscopic spine surgery, they remove parts of the bones and ligaments. They do what's called a laminectomy. Laminectomy is bad. It ruins your spine. But it's easier to do for surgeons. And they make more money doing it. So that's why they do it that way. More money, easier. I've never chosen the easy path in life. I've always chosen the best path. And I do the same for my patients every day. Choose what's best for them. All right, I'm just about done in one minute. I'm gonna take your questions and answer them directly face to face. Henry, will you call 1288? Ask Karen to manufacture me another cup of coffee. Copy that. Was that coffee that or copy that? <laughs> well, now that you mentioned coffee that. <laughs> uh, thank you, Henry. Anybody else up for a cup of coffee? Luis, save some for Luis. Negro y blanco. Negro like me. Yeah. Oscar, you too? Karen, All right. Karen is currently in a meeting. Uh, that's not as important as my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Nicole can do it. Let's see where I, let's Just see what go I down do. the list. <laughs> I know Sam makes a mean cup of coffee. We're pretty much done. Uh, I'm gonna just look right here, make sure. The flashes of light are from bone spurs, um, which we're not taking out because they're not causing any problems in this particular patient. Let's see if we can get three out of three nerves. Oh! Nope, I can't see a nerve in there. All right, I gotta get a little more of that disc right there. Last piece of disc. So we got two out of three nerves. That's still better than most patients. Normally we don't see the nerves. They're hidden in fat. That looks good. Thank you. Done. Slide pump, please. You. That was a real five minutes. Dr. Bernd is wide eyes staring at me going, what? You actually finished in five minutes like you said you would? I don't believe it, right? <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's the way to go, man. We got to do it on everybody. Really? Isn't it crazy how we come up with all these new ideas here that nobody else thinks about? Hundred percent, we can do it. We need to do a study for Aka. So that will be the study. I mean, you got to design the study with Berndez and I'll, I'll help you. But there has to be, you know, we need to look at, maybe what you look at is PCO2, you look at saturation. Yeah, but, but what are you looking for? I know, retro. But what are you looking for? Time to recovery, um, oxygenation. Yeah, you got to think about what are the variables we're going to study and CO2, right. CO2, oxygenation. I mean, you come up with the variables and then we can do the study. We know what the treatment is going to be, the two arms of the cohort, but we don't know what the outcome variables we're looking for. Are. All right, we're done. I'm going to answer your questions for you uh, in, the com in the broadcast room when I come over there. So type them up. In the meantime, we're gonna show you real quick the incision that was made. Can you guys turn the lights on? Can you guys see this, Henry? Yes, we do. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna show you the herniations. Thank you, Oscar's done a beautiful job. Can you see all these? Yes, we do. Huh? 30 pieces he counted. And there's more out here on the, on the, on the, uh, Blue towels. You guys see all this, Henry? Yes. All right, Henry, this is the picture I want you to gra get uh, and send me also for the, for the article. Okay? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I also need the endoscope. This, we're going to use this as the, the main picture for the article. I'm about to submit for publication. 
long-term outcomes for lumbar DLDR. Okay, so I'm going to put this here. All right, maybe, no, maybe I'll do it this way. You see that? That's perfect. Hold on. Hold on. No, 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 not yet. I want to do this too. Okay. I count of three. One, two, three. Get a couple. Can you see the incision? Y yes, we do. All right, perfect. You got a couple of good ones? Yes, we do. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Great job, team. Going to make history. That picture is going to get published, and it'll be forever in the, pub in the National Library of Medicine. Blood loss, one mil. DLDR. This was a left. L34, 45, 5S1. Everyone agrees? Oh, that last one was a 10 out of 10, guys, not a 9 out of 10. Right? Did I miss something? The last disc was a 10 out of 10. All right. Thanks, everyone. Next case is in room two. Dr. R. Duke Majin here at the Duke Spine Institute. I'm smiling because I'm sitting with my first surgical patient of 2023. I don't know if you realize that, but you oh. were the first one of this year, okay. of the new year. <laughs> now you had the Duke laser disc repair done on your lower back because you had three bad discs. And we did that right. yesterday. Yesterday, yes. And here you are one day later, how do you feel? And I feel good. I feel good and the pain that I've been suffering for months is gone. I mean, I'm a little bit sore, but that's from the surgery itself. Yeah. But otherwise, I feel good. I feel good. Now, you've had back pain, too, on and off for 30 years. We were talking about that. Tell us about those episodes of back pain. What do they do to you? The first one that I recall was pulling out a sofa bed thing, and I got so far with it, you know, we had company, and I was opening up the bed, and all of a sudden, I just could not move. I could not... I couldn't move. My husband had to practically carry me. So I was out of work for a week or so and then at the chiropractor and then gradually got better and I thought, well, that's fine. And I moved on and then, you know, had a couple other times like that. One time I was drying my hair, getting ready for work with the blow dryer going like this with my hair and all of a sudden it's like I couldn't move. I couldn't move my arm down. I, I couldn't, I mean, it was that quick. Yeah. And just, I was out again for another week, laying in the bed and doing all that stuff. And then I thought I was fine, but I always, not always, but for many years now, probably at least those 30, I had lower back pain, where mm -hmm. in the morning I couldn't bend over to brush my teeth. You know, mm -hmm. that would really hurt. Yes. So I had that. Do you have that pain now? No, no, I, I don't think so. It's I'm, gone. The pain this morning, I was the first time in a long time I've gotten up first thing in the morning and was able to walk and not have that awful pain because first thing in the mornings was the toughest. I'm so happy for you. So how is the surgery going to help happy. you in your life? Well, hopefully I can, it, once I can at least walk again, I was not able to barely walk with a walker. I was very active, very active in my church and my so community. So you want to get active again? And being in such pain now since July, and this is the new year, I'm anxious to get back to, you know, my life. Yes, of course. Well, you had three herniated discs in your lower back, and you can see in the footage where we went in to each of those three discs, and I used a laser to clean the tear where you had a tear in the back of those each of those discs called an annular tear, and the jelly from the center was stuck in the tear, holding it open. 
allowing more herniations to come out. So I got rid of the jelly that was in there using the laser, cleaned out the tear, and now your body will be able to heal that for the first time in 30 years. So I don't expect you to ever have that pain ever again. Thank you. You're welcome. I am so thankful. Well, you had faith I and am. you found us. Yes, I did. You, you did what's right for your body and I'm, I'm excited for you, so. I believe I did. I just kind of was led to you and it just all went bing, bang, boom. And I didn't ask a whole lot of other people what they thought. I just did what I thought was I needed to do Good. for me. Is there anything you want to say to your fans out there? <laughs> I, I would recommend that if you do something to your back, it's you take care of it early on. You take care of it right away. The longer you wait, the, the harder it is and the longer it takes. It takes a toll on your life. It, oh, definitely. It has taken a toll on mine since this summer, for sure, where I could not, I have not been able to sometimes not function at all, barely be able to sit in a chair and be comfortable without squirming because I couldn't find that exact place where I didn't have pain. You know? I don't see you squirming anymore. No, I'm not squirming. I know. That's great. Sit here without pain. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks to you. All right. Have a blessed day. Thank you. You do as well. And good morning, I'm Dr. Duke Majin. I'm here with one of my lovely patients from Canada who has visited us because her back has been hurting for seven years. She's had a herniated disc that she's been kind of monitoring at L5-S1. And finally, it really started bothering her a lot over the last seven months to a year, causing pain down into her right leg. So she decided to do something about it. And she went to see her doctor in Canada, who then said, yeah, I'll have you see the specialist in three and a half years. <laughs> Yes. Well, that wasn't going to work for you, right? No, no. Yeah, because you don't want to live in pain for three and a half more years. And even then, you don't know what you're going to be offered. But she found the Duke Spine Institute and learned about the Duke Laser Disc Repair Endoscopic Surgery. And uh, you had it done yesterday. Yes, yeah. How are you doing? I'm feeling great today. Um, I have no pain in my back. I have some tight muscles from me having to walk very oddly for quite a while due to the sciatic pain. I must say, I this is the happiest I've been in a very long time to be able to stand up straight and go for a walk. Because I'm active person as is, I ride horses for a living, so having to be locked up in in my room for the past while has not been good. So this has felt amazing, amazing. So you're happy with the results? Very. I feel very hopeful also to be able to do what I want to for the rest of my life. Yeah, after we let the disc heal, right? Yes, <laughs> full year of nothing, and then we can. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say nothing, but, you know, horseback riding, it's one of those things where I love horses and I love riding horses. I'm not very good at it, but I'm one of those people you see bouncing up and down, <laughs> up in the saddle. So I know that it can be rough on your back, and I just want to make sure you give it your back a full year to heal. So you can see in your surgery right here, we actually tested your L5-S1 disc with a discogram which is a test done to verify that that disc is indeed causing your back pain. And when we tested it, you said, ah, and we asked you how bad it was. You said 10 out of 10 pain. And I said, is that your typical pain you get every day? And you said, yes, it is. So we verified the source of your pain was the L5-S1. And you can see the laser was used to clean the tear endoscopically. Your incision was only a quarter inch and there's no need for fusion or metal or artificial disc. This surgery replaces fusion and artificial disc. What are you gonna do now that you're feeling better? Um, well, it's, again, I don't worry, I will take it easy, I promise. But um, uh, no, I'm gonna be, um, after this, you know, this year, I hope to be the strongest I've ever been, and I have very high hopes and whatnot. I, my dream is to make, actually, the Canadian Olympic team for my sport, and uh, that is, that's end goal, and I feel like it's a possibility now. Absolutely. Do it. You can. Yeah. We're rooting for you. Mm -hmm. And I know you have an incredibly supportive husband uh, who's been by your side the whole time. He's a delightful young man and I've had time to talk to him as well. So you're lucky you have support from your family to help lucky. you get yeah. through this. Yeah. Anything you want to say to your fans out there? Oh, geez, I, I don't even know where to start other than just um, 
this place really can offer you really what either you deserve or what you need going forward to be able to live a happy and good life. And I'm, I'm, it's amazing to me that literally it was yesterday, I woke up from it and I went for a short walk like immediately and I felt amazing. So it's, um, yeah, it's uh, very hopeful. And um, if there's, uh, you are suffering from any of it, don't wait, especially for the Canadian system. Come and do this, it's worth it. It's really worth it. Awesome, and I'm going to be, and my whole team is going to be watching the equestrian sports in the Olympics, waiting, awesome. looking to see for you yeah. to be there. Yeah, All right, awesome. and Amazing. of course, supporting you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, take care. Well, thank you for joining us on this surgery. We just completed a Duke laser disc repair, left L3-4, 4551. You could see in the beginning of the surgery, I tested all three discs and the guy had 10 out of 10 pain at L3-4, 9 out of 10 pain at L4-5, 7 out of 10 pain at L5-S1. So we confirmed that the discs were indeed the cause of his back pain. Um, and more importantly than the numbers were the fact that the pain was concordant. We also discovered something else important today that's going to revolutionize healthcare again, um, and that is the use of, of CPAP during max sedation. And what I mean by that is the biggest risk for patients having an unsecured airway and having propofol sedation in, and being prone, laying on their belly looking down, is that the anesthesiologist who's giving them sleepy medicine called propofol, it could shut the brain down completely to the point the patient stops breathing. And then it becomes somewhat of an emergency. And so it's very easy to do that uh, with this type of sedation. It's standard sedation, everybody does it, but um, the risk is always there. You don't want that risk to be there, but of course it is a safety concern and one that we've been working on trying to figure out a better way to do it. So we found something very interesting. The patients that have CPAP machines, because they have obstructive sleep apnea, moderate to severe, we don't have any issues with them. And we realized that if we took a patient who does not have obstructive sleep apnea and we actually put a CPAP machine on them, that we don't have any problems. And they ventilate beautifully throughout the surgery and you can keep them really sedated. So we have, purchase CPAP machines just for our patients having this procedure and we started to use them and when we use it the something amazing happens the patient has the best anesthesia experience in the world they're very deep they're very happy and the anesthesiologist is happy because the patient's airway is secure and it is being ventilated well um, so we are talking about now doing a study where we'll compare patients with and without the CPAP uh, machine um, during the max sedation on a prone position for these procedures and see if there's uh, better um, outcomes with respect to oxygenation and CO2 levels in expired air. So, great stuff, constantly improving what we're doing. Every, every seems like every week, every month at Duke's Pine. That said, the laser surgery part went beautifully. Henry and I got some amazing pictures we don't always get to see the nerve root, okay? But just so you guys understand what I'm talking about, this is the view right here. We're inside the disc right here. And what I did was I pulled the tube back out of the disc and I gave you a little view of this nerve root right there, just the corner. And so you could see the herniation where it was and the disc, I and mean, then the nerve root. So you could see the hole where the herniation was. And that hole is around three millimeters wide. And that's the hole that has to seal off after the surgery. We talk about that sealing off. That takes nine months to a year. I'm working on developing some technology that would allow that to seal off quicker so that people can go back to doing normal activities faster. Unfortunately, bringing something like that to market is going to take millions and millions and millions of dollars that I don't have. And so I'm going to have to figure out how to do it cheaply uh, and get the studies done cheaply. Um, just at least to get the, the safety studies done for the FDA. But that's a whole nother ball of wax. This patient's surgery went great. Uh, we did not use any investigational devices. 
but in the future I may end up starting to use something that would help that hole seal off quicker and it's not going to be the barricade device or disc seal because those things don't work okay um, let's take some questions there are no current questions. No questions. Yeah. Do we have any viewers? Uh, yeah, we have a few. All right. Oh. This coffee is cold and old. <laughs> I'm going to need some fresh coffee. Let me get Karen on the phone. Give me a second. I'm going to give you guys a chance to write some questions real quick. Karen Foley, Executive Administrative Assistant. No questions? Please. No, at the moment, no. All right, well, then we're going to end the broadcast. I'm glad you stuck around and watched the surgery. It went very well for the patient, and he's going to go home in about an hour. Uh, and we'll be back with our next surgery, which is a two-level lumbar duke laser disc